today, Jerry Harris, a breakout star of Netflix Unexpected Hip Cheer has been handed 12 years in jail, marking the final descent in his fall from grace. The former competitive cheerleader, who interviewed Brad Pitt and Billie Eilish after he rocketed to fame, had pleaded guilty to receiving images of child sexual abuse and to traveling with the intent to engage in illicit sexual conduct. Before the sentencing hearing today, Kaylee Guzman said that Harris, 22, had used his status as a competitive cheerleader and his fame and fortune to persuade and entice his young victims to engage in sexually explicit conduct for him or with him. We've taken a look at Harris' rise to fame, from chatting to U.S. President Joe Biden, then a Democratic candidate, and his disgraceful fall. In January 2020, Cheer, a six-episode documentary series about a cheer squad at a Texas college, took the world by storm. The show, about Navarro College's hugely successful cheer team, was labeled awe-inspiring and garlanded with praise for its examination of the competitive sport, and the students who are driven to fling themselves in the air in gravity-defying moves, in order to get to the top of their game. The cameras follow the squad, including Harris, as they practice the seemingly perilous moves ahead of the all-important national championships at Daytona Beach. After injuries and tense exchanges, the team push through to win the competition, which concludes the series. Following the release of the show, Harris' enthusiasm made him a fan favorite, and he and his cast members became instant celebrities. Alongside his teammates, Harris appeared on The Ellen DeGeneres Show, NBC's Today program, and even met Oprah during one of her tour stops. Harris even worked as a correspondent for Ellen at the 2020 Oscars, speaking to not only Pitt and Eilish, but Mindy Kaling and Adina Menzel. In a smart black suit, he walked the red carpet at the Vanity Fair Oscar party, attended by Hollywood's elite. American President Joe Biden, then the Democratic candidate for the top job, even held an Instagram chat with a cheerleader, where they spoke about the importance of registering to vote. In June 2020, Harris tweeted a clip of the short Instagram chat, which ended with Biden telling Harris he would like to spend the day with him. His celebrity was reaching dizzying heights and he appeared to be beloved by all, but in less than a year everything in changed. In September 2020, Harris, then 19, was arrested by the FBI after being accused of sexual abuse by two 13-year-old twin brothers. Opening up about why they reported Harris during an episode of season 2 of Cheer, which addressed Harris' downfall, one of the twins said, I want to be the start of the change in Cheer. Jerry was initially charged with one count of producing child pornography but in December 2020, he was indicted on more charges alleging sexual misconduct in Illinois, Florida, and Texas. In February this year, Harris pleaded guilty to two of the seven felony counts against him. He admitted that he had persuaded a 17-year-old to send him sexually explicit photos for money and that he had also traveled to Florida for the purpose of engaging in illicit sexual conduct with a 15-year-old. Prosecutors dropped the remaining five charges as part of a plea agreement. Guzman's full sentencing memo read that Harris used his status as a competitive cheerleader, his social media persona, and eventually his celebrity and money, to persuade and entice his young victims to engage in sexually explicit conduct for him or with him. Harris' defense lawyers argued that the former cheerleader had a traumatic childhood, and that he was sexually assaulted himself as a child. His lawyers wrote, the trauma he experienced as a child normalized his skewed version of what he understood to be appropriate relationships. No one was there to stand up for him when he was sexually assaulted as a minor. 
He is grateful that is not the case for his victims in this case, to whom he is profoundly remorseful. Federal prosecutors acknowledged that Harris' childhood was a mitigating factor in his crimes, but said, while Harris's childhood was very difficult, it was not a blank check to commit sex offenses against minors.